back. This summer, the Monshire Museum is a site for a pollinator research project, and they have an event coming up this weekend. Joining us to tell us more about that is lead researcher Desiree Narango and Honor Hingston Cox from the Monshire Museum. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. So tell us a bit about the project. What have you been studying? Sure, so I'm a conservation scientist at the Vermont Center for Eco Studies, and this project really grew out of the question of so many people asking me what sort of flowers they should plant in their gardens to attract butterflies and bees and other pollinators. And so our research project is really looking at different types of gardens, like meadows and yards and agricultural spaces to see what kind of flowers they're choosing, are there particular traits that are really attractive, and then how are these preferences varying across these different land use types. So it'll really give us a lot of information about how we can then restore areas so that we can better support our, uh, our threatened and vulnerable pollinator species. And Desiree, what have you found this summer? There are a lot of pollinators out there and there's a lot of plants that they're choosing too. It's been really, really exciting. Um, but one of the really um, incredible observations that we made is that there are some bumblebees that are uh, threatened species or, or ones that we wanna know more about and they will readily use the native plants that people are planting in community gardens and botanical gardens. So uh, there's, a, there's a bumblebee that we found at a, uh, a tiny uh, horticultural space up in Fairly that I was super excited to see. And so it's just, it just goes to show that there's so much more than the common species that are out there. For sure. And Honor, have you done projects like this in the past at Monshire or is this the first time you've done it? This is brand new for us. We've always talked about, we've always brought scientists in to talk about their current work, but this is the first time we've really empowered our visitors to take part in a current scientific study. And so we're really excited to get people to use their smartphones as a scientific tool and, uh, and really contribute to Desiree's project in a timely, timely way. And we're finding that you know, any contribution makes a difference. And so mm -hmm. people can take photos in their backyards, but we love it when people take photos here on site uh, that can contribute to that section of the project too. Yeah, so how does that work? So every phone uh, used in the project has the app iNaturalist installed in it, and you have to create an account and then you just go out in the field or out in your backyard and you look for pollinators interacting with plants and you take a photo, add it to iNaturalist to your account and it will naturally become part of the project. You might need to get in there and tell where you saw it uh, and make a guess as to what it is. But there are so many researchers who are on iNaturalist looking at that data as it comes in that any contribution that you will make Will get involved get get to be part of the project i have iNaturalist and i love using it because i'm always curious about what i'm seeing when i'm outside tell us about the event coming up this weekend what can visitors expect what's going to be involved so it's saturday from 10 30 to 4 30 and it's going to be a lot of hands-on science projects hands-on crafts oh i have one to show you we're going to be making mechanical butterflies which are gorgeous. Oh, those are fun. Um, they're so beautiful. <laughs> and of course, you get to choose the species that you want to make and take, but there's a lot going on. And there's a butterfly story time. But the main thrust is really going to be uh, getting the app on people's phones and empowering them to go out to the meadow and participate and meet Desiree and meet the members of her team and get to know uh, real working scientists in the field. And so is this a project that is going on only at the museum or is this really anywhere in the state that people are? There are a lot of different locations in the Upper Valley where this project is taking place. So we've put out signs um, asking people to submit their observations of pollinators on different flowers. So if you see one of our signs, I hope that you'll submit some data. Uh, but this really grew out of the observation when I moved to Vermont that a lot of folks were already collecting these kind of data on iNaturalist. So uh, like Honor is saying, you can collect this kind of data from anywhere. If you have a, a camera or a smartphone, um, you can just take a photo of things, uh, of pollinators that you see visiting the flowers in your favorite place that you like to walk where you're walking your dog or going with your family. And all of that data can be incredibly valuable um, community collected data to help us answer really important scientific questions. Very neat, and we will have more information on our website. Desiree and Honor, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much.